What's good? What's good? What's good? What's good? No excuse family and the passport bros. So this is one of three streams I'm doing today. I got a returning uh, brother on a platform. Um, he's in South Africa. He's been in South Africa for some time. And I'll bring him up in a moment so he can introduce himself and, um, you know, talk about what he's been doing. Um, so he had um, pointed out to me that he had purchased land in South Africa. And and also he had mentioned uh, a stream that I did on how to buy land in South Africa. So I want to bring this brother up. And, you know, I mean, we're just going to talk about, um, you know, his purchase things he got in the works, and then also his organization. So I'm going to bring up Brother Kimani. What's good, bro? Good, on, man. good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, good to see you as well, man. How, how's everything? Oh, everything's going good, man. You know, um, I was just going to say, too, I actually just got back to the U.S. Uh, on the 6th. I've okay. Been, uh, back about a week. I'm in Colombia right now. Um Visiting okay. my side of the family. Um, yeah, I have some recent deaths, so you know, I, I do be missing my family, you know, as much as much as I like to stay overseas. <laughs> I do be missing the fam. So um, so yeah, I just came back, you know, to visit and um catch up with everybody. You said in Columbia or uh yeah, Columbia, South Carolina, my bad. Oh, okay, okay. Columbia, yeah. <laughs> okay, I was like, okay, I didn't know you was Colombian, but okay, I got you. Oh yeah, nah. <laughs> nah I Columbia, got you. <laughs> So those, so those who um, may not be familiar with you, um, introduce yourself, the organization, and then just kind of walk us through um, your time in Africa. Cool. Okay. Yeah. So uh, my name is Kimani, originally from Texas, uh, born in Killeen. For any you know military people out there, uh, y'all know Fort Hood. <laughs> pretty sure y'all heard of Fort Hood. So um, pretty much grew up in Texas my whole life. Other than that, I lived in Cali. For, uh, lived in LA for two years. Um, I was was going to school out there. Uh, lived in Germany for about eight months. Um, before my dad went back to Afghanistan, then we ended up, you know, just going back to the U.S. Um, while he was over there, and then um, yeah, start, so so early on, you know, my travel um, my travel barriers were kind of broken, like as far as like being afraid of culture shock and you know a change of scenery and that kind of thing. So. Um, yeah. Uh, so at this moment in time, the past, I would say five years. Um, yeah, five years, going on five years. Um, I've been traveling abroad. And um, uh, recently, um, I started a passion project called uh, Virtual Heart, which is what I'm wearing right now, you know, um, which is basically like a souvenir and a travel brand um, that I'm still trying to get off the ground, I would say, even though I'm like, I've been doing it for about five years now, you know, um, still trying to find, um, I don't want to say like purpose, but like um, my lane, I guess I would say. But um, we'd like to make souvenirs that support self-sustainable projects, which is um, what we're moving moving into um, this year for sure. And um, recently I've also became a member of this organization called the LEDGE Group, which stands for Land for Environmental Development of Group Economics. Um, based here in the U.S., we have members from all over the diaspora. Um, we have uh, projects in eight different countries in Africa or across Africa, including South Africa. Um, there in the Free State, we have a uh, water filtration company, um, which, which also serves the community. People can come and get, you know, uh, fill up uh, bottles of water for one rand per liter. Um, and uh, we, do, we have a brick making company there as well. And... Um, yeah, so I'm looking to for my brand to um, to support the projects that we're doing there and throughout the other countries that we're active in as well um, through you know coffee mugs, t-shirts, hats. I'm I'm trying to do everything eventually, you know. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much pretty much what I'm uh, what I was doing in South Africa for so long and why free state. Why I was introduced to the free state, <laughs> okay. um, you know, for my first time there, really outside of Johannesburg. Yeah. Okay, cool. Now, I remember last time we spoke, you mentioned that, um, and I got to get the link from you again and put it in this um, in this video, but you mentioned that if people want to buy land um, through your organization, can you talk about that? The yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, through the project projects that we do throughout these countries, um, about nine different countries, uh, Ghana, Sierra Leone, um, Ghana, Sierra Leone, Kenya, 
Uganda, Zambia, Tanzania. Uh, did I say Kenya? Uh, Kenya and South Africa. But yeah, so about eight countries, I think. I don't think I counted right, but but yeah. Um, so through the projects that we do, we build personal relationships, you know, um, and with the people who either attend a, a workshop or you know something like that, or who's benefiting from the clinic, or you know, or what have you. People, you know, these people have access to resources, you know, um, whether it's land, uh, minerals, uh, <laughs> you know. Um, I mean, the possibilities are just endless. So uh, what ends up happening is that you know. We over here in the in you know in the U.S. or you know we have some members from Europe as well. Um, we have the capital, so we end up getting getting into talks with different projects. Like in Tanzania, we're um, you know working on developing uh, resorts. Um, South Africa, we um, we're you know through the water project, we getting access to land. You know, in um, in Kwakwa or Kwakwa, and we uh, you know say <laughs> somebody correct me, but. Um, yeah, I don't know. The the uh, in Sierra Leone, we got access to a building, um, a vacant building that we were able to, you know, turn into a clinic that services the community now. So, um, you know, different things like that are, you know, um, are what we're able to do. And so, with the land as well, um, it, it is customary land that is owned by chiefs. Okay. Um, so far, where we where we're buying land as a group, you know, in bulk is like Zambia, Tanzania, South Africa, Kenya, and uh, Ghana. We have plots. But they do more plots in Ghana, um, okay. say in West Africa in general, from uh, my experience. Um, but yeah, so we we get uh, access to land at like discounted prices, basically like wholesale. Mm -hmm. um, so when we get those opportunities like that, we'll you know post it in the group and present it, and be like, okay, this is how much it costs. Um, that includes the the tribal tax or the chief tax, you know, whatever, um, however they call it, you know, in which in which country and. Um, yeah, and, and I mean, after that, it's pretty much yours forever. You get the documentation. Uh -huh. um, to South Africa specifically, um, how it uh, how it happens is that you know they just uh, how they document it is through your passport number. So mm -hmm. um, you know they'll give you the form. Um, are you able to pull up the the paper actually, or are we gonna get into that later? Or oh, which which the one that you put in the group? Yeah, the one I put in the group. I could pull. I could pull that up. Um, I'll, okay. I'll, I'll keep that ready readily. Available. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, um, I think it is interesting when you get into the conversation of uh, customary land versus state owned land. Mm -hmm. um, it could go either way. I would just say go with every you're most comfortable with um, coming from the U.S. for the brothers out there. Um, go which one, you know, whichever one you're most comfortable with and whichever mm -hmm. one you think is more secure. Um, the reason why I feel more secure with customary land is because of the projects that, you know, we do through the ledge group. Um, I feel like when you, once you're servicing the community of, you know, essential needs that, you know, nothing can, you know, really replace that or mess that up. And if people can point to, you know, in their local communities of like your contribution to, you know, um, how they're thriving and, you know, and different things like that, then I think you would have really have a problem with, um, with, um, I don't know, with having the fear of them taking your land or anything like that. Interesting. So so you so you are not really a, a proponent of um urban land, urban urban real estate. Uh I would if I wanted to live in a city, but me personally, I, I kind of want to live like, you know, on a rural lifestyle, like on a farm, you know, a state kind of thing personally <laughs> but i would invest in real estate in the urban though you know like get like a condo or something like that whenever i am in the city or whenever i may fly in you know might want to spend a few days in the city or something like that but um, but the, the opportunities your organization um puts out is typically customary land projects right and we do we do have the options um so a few members are doing um are taking the plots of land that that we've bought in, um, or that they've they've bought personally for themselves um, in Zambia and turning it into state-owned land. Like there, we have um, legal processes that you know can assist you with that. Mm -hmm. But the only thing is that now it's going to be taxed. So okay. That's the only thing too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So, um, dang, what I was going to ask you? Um, dang, I forgot what I was going to ask you. So, if if I have, if, let's say somebody got five or ten thousand dollars. What could I? What could I? What could I get with five or ten thousand dollars? 
Oh man, you can get a lot. I mean, we um so in SA specifically, we bought uh fifty or forty acres uh, all together. Mm-hmm. I bought one personally, so it was um we were able to get it down to like five hundred per acre. Mm-hmm. Um, but normally I'm thinking like an acre will run you about uh maybe a thousand five, two thousand. Again, depending on your relationship with the chief and how you're you know how you're trying to go about it and what you're trying to do as well is um what matters also. Like if you're just trying to build a home for a residence, um, then it might, you know, be a little bit more expensive. But if it's for agriculture, which, you know, to them means that it's going to create jobs, you know, um, from, you know, farm handling to transportation, processing, processing, different things like that. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to get into your purchase in a minute, but I just got a couple of, uh, you know, questions to lead up to that. So five or $10,000. I could probably get something, but most likely it it can't be for residential use if it if it's customary. Right, right. And again, I mean, um, like I'm I met with um with the chief and you know he's he's just excited about you know what the group is about and he's you know been to like the water um a water filtration site and stuff like that. And so um, he's, you know, very welcoming um, to anything we want to do at this point. So um, if we want to build a home, then we're able to do that, you know, as long as the projects, you know, keep right, right. Going, uh, going running. So, yeah, so it, it's um, it, it, it varies. I would say it varies. Now, because I know when I was doing research um, on it, on buying land, I know that a lot of people brought up the question is, do you have to build within three months? With yeah. the- through the chief, do you have to? Do you have a certain time frame to to break ground? Right. Yeah. So, um, so that one is another thing that varies as well. Um, okay. I would say no, because uh, right now what we're doing is, um, I think we the last people that bought their land should be getting their um, paperwork pretty soon, either this month or next month. I got mine back in uh, December. Oh. Um, I have, I have bought mine a little early on, but uh, I would say no. Uh, again, you know, it all, it all varies, you know, it all depends, but for the most part, I would say maybe if it's, you know, strictly for residential, then yeah, they would expect you to be building, you know, within three months. Okay. Okay. Did you have that conversation about that or was that? Oh, I didn't. No, I didn't even ask that. Okay. Okay. And, and what about payment plan so if 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 something is let's say five or ten thousand dollars i'm just throwing these numbers out mm-hmm. um do you have to do they want you to pay in full or you could say you know what and let's just say some people in the u.s let's just say you know what i could probably save five or ten thousand dollars but you know what i mean i may have to you know it may, it may take me several months to uh to save that mm-hmm. but they but they but they see an opportunity they want to hop on right now Right. Do you do you have to have the money, or do you think or you think you could work out a payment structure, or 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 do you recommend just being able to just pay it in full and not have to worry about? Um, that? Yeah, you can definitely work out a payment structure. Um, we've well, been able to successfully do that um, with with the land that we bought because um, uh-huh. some people did buy uh, more than one acre, you know, for themselves. And um, yeah, I would definitely say you're able to do a payment plan. And as long as you, um, I mean, if you're doing like solo, like, you know, like on your own terms or whatever, I would say definitely submit it with like a business plan. That way they see, you know, like a budget of what you're spending. And then, you know, like, a, yeah, I mean, uh, you, you're you establishing your own payment plan. So that way they see it. And um, and so the way we operate, we have a um, um, what we call executive director, which mm-hmm. is basically like a project manager. So, you know, he speaks the language. He's a local and um, he's the one that works out all the deals in um basically brokered the deal like you know the 40 acres for 500 each so okay. um, so right so he's able to you know do things like that okay let's see uh question uh statement essay red pill by land in benda to it's highly fertile land mass oh where's that at? yeah well, benda venda where is that i never heard of uh venda let us know where that is. Is that up near Pumalanga or like Popo? I I'm not sure. Oh, okay. But hopefully, hopefully he responds to that. So um I'll 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 highlight I'll show what the video that I did just so people can know, and then we'll go into um okay. He said Limpopo. Oh, okay, okay. 
Yeah, I heard Limpopo is this beautiful. You know what I mean? I definitely want to check uh check it out. Yeah, you my know? plan is to get a car when I, next time I go back, rent a car and like just drive, you know, <laughs> drive to different provinces like Juby out there, you know. <laughs> Let me uh shout out to Juby. So yeah, so I had did a video um damn YouTube. So I had did a video on um how to buy land in South Africa, which was a uh, very informative. And I know that you mentioned that you had um you had checked it out as well. So one of the things, so one of the things that um so so one of the things that I had discovered because I went to the land registry office and um in um Peter Marisberg, which is in Nazi Quartal, um, the same the same province that Durban is in. And they pretty much said that there was three main types, you know, of ways you could buy. You could buy rural land like you did through through the chiefs, or they call them kings. And then there's there's a there's an association that governs the uh, you know, those type of lands, and then you have land then you have land that's owned by the state which is managed by each respective municipality so whether it's durban or whether it's um um whether it's something else uh whether it's durban whether it's johannesburg whether it's cape town you got those municipalities that have those states those state-owned lands that you can that you can essentially buy from the city and then you have, you know, private, you know, private sellers that that's selling land and things of that nature as well. So basically three primary, um, you know, um, sources you could buy real estate from through the through the kings or chiefs or tribes, however you want to um, coin it, through the municipalities and then through private sellers real estate agents, private sellers that, that own land, things like that. So you bought land um through the chiefs through the king through the tribe mm -hmm. what tribe did this uh chief represent uh the sutu sutu tribe sutu tribe okay southern sutu but by sutu because you know um free state actually used to be a part of um like the sutu land the sutu what is now the Sutu? what is now known as the sutu um okay yeah yeah so not but now it's you know in south africa yeah okay so brother kimani he bought land um he he he, he bought land through a chief um the Sutu tribe and the the province you you chose was free state so those who don't know um south africa has nine provinces or you know we would look at them as states, but they have nine provinces. Free state is not, I would say, not the most commonly known right, state. No. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because usually people hit up South Africa, they hit up the top three. They hit up Johannesburg, which is in um, what's the state in Johannesburg? Uh, yeah, Guatang, Johannesburg, which is in Guatang. Cape Town, which is in Western Cape, and Durban, which is in Quasi Natal. So, um, so why why Free State? Um, for me, when I, uh, I I spent a few days in Johannesburg, like four, when I first got there back in December. Um, mm -hmm. I stayed in Santon, and I mean it was cool. It just reminded me of the U.S. You know, grocery stores. You know, you know, white folks. Uh, uh, supermarkets um the fast food it, it was cool but like i don't know for me it just i just um I, was, I mean as soon as i went to the free state i felt like you know i was in africa i'm not gonna lie to you like and you know just the mountains and i mean how the i mean uh guac -Gua is actually pretty big too um it takes at least like 45 minutes to get to like where we bought our land to get to where like the water site is the water filtration um, site. Um, so it's a pretty big town and it's growing too. And for me, I like to be, you know, like I like to be on the frontier and um, mm -hmm. I like to be a trailblazer, you know, um, on things like that. So I, I see a lot of potential in like how it can grow like the next, you know, you know, five, 10, 15 years, you know, what have you. And um, they're actually building like a petrol station um, 
near where, um, like on the other side of, um, like really like down the street from where um, our um, our project site is. Okay. So um, with that, you know, it's gonna come like, you know, more, you know, more development, more shops. They might put a, a grocery store, you know, something like that down there next. And um, yeah, I just I just fell in love with it, man. The mountains, just you know, super peaceful. Um, yeah, you know, I, you know, once you once you've traveled a lot, you you know, been through a lot of mega cities and stuff like that. You you kind of just want you know something. You know, <laughs> we gotta be low key somewhere where I feel like I'll be comfortable raising children. You know, because I see that in the foreseeable future. You know, like like three to five years, I would say. Um, so that's kind of what I'm you know building towards as well. And again, you know, I'm not against, you know, urban real estate. I would love to have something, a condo or something like that in, you know, in Joburg or Cape Town. Or, you know, I just, this is going to take a little bit more time for me to explore and see, you know, see where I would like to do that at. But um, that's kind of my mindset for me. Um, okay. Okay. So you chose Free State. And then how did you come about finding or knowing about this opportunity to buy land in uh, Free State? Right. Um, yeah, so that, that that just came through the group, you know. Um, we've been active in SA for about uh I would say three years now, since two thousand or four years, going on four years since twenty eighteen. Um and I joined the group in December of twenty yeah, December twenty twenty. So about a year now. So it um and before that I was doing, you know, like my own research and kinda um, you know, getting a feel for like what the group was about and you know, seeing how they move and how they operate until I felt comfortable enough to join. Um, so for me, it was um, it was just kind of a no brainer. Um, it was kind of a no brainer. I mean, what I was looking for and know what I'm you know trying to build towards. OK, could you uh, do you have a link for the group if people want to join a group and um, be a uh, part of what you. Yeah, for sure. I can actually I got Facebook open, too. I can um, post the entry group. So we have a group called the Grand Rising, which is like basically you can go in there and see. Um, See the projects that are see the countries that we're active in and you know photos of the projects uh project sites and um yeah and, and everything let me see and you could just uh if you can you could you could either copy and paste in the chat and i could repost it and um make sure i put it in the description as well for the um the facebook group so just those are just tuning in so um there we go. He has a group. It's on Facebook. It's a nonprofit, right? Mm. It's a nonprofit, and they uh, post uh, opportunities to buy land for certain different projects. And um, you know, I asked them if you can, if you got, let's say, if you got five or ten thousand dollars, could you own real estate in South Africa? And you know, he said yes. Oh, yeah. So, um. So let me put the um so here's the Facebook group for y'all to join. Um actually I'm a, I need I'm, I need to make sure I I I I join as well. And okay. um, let me also add as well. Um you know uh you can also um buy land for you know for personal use and what you know whatever you want to do with it. Um one thing we ask in the group is like you know whatever you would like to do with your land you're able to do it. Um we're looking to get into uh, hemp uh production as well. So that's one thing that we ask, like when you when you buy your land is like, you know, do you want to use it for residential or agricultural purposes? So that way, also, we know how to lay it out, because the next step that we're doing. Um, yeah. So what you're looking at right now is the um, is the paperwork from the traditional council, which is basically like the um, I don't know. How, how would you describe that? Like the. Um, is, it like a, is it like a is it like a transfer of ownership? Right. Or, yeah. You know? Oh, no, nah, this is indefinite. This is indefinite, like forever. Unless, I mean, you know, you always have, you, you, I mean, you do, I mean, like the cons, right, of, of traditional land. And I would say with state-owned land, too, you always have the possibility of your land getting taken or something happening, you know. Right. Um, like, worst case scenario. Um, they do, um, so say this chief that honored, that signed this, right? Mm -hmm. um, say, you know, he, he passes on, then the next chief comes along. Um, the chief will still honor that, you know, yeah. but I think there's always still a small percentage possibility that something could happen when they're like, nah, you got to leave this land or you got to, you know, 
do this or do that. And I think that's possible with state-owned land too, with like a government change, regime change, military coup. You know, like it, you know, it's kind of just one of those things. But I would have more, I have more confidence in um in knowing that you uh you helped people, you know, hand in hand. Like it was a mutual benefit and not, you know, one way or the other. Well, from 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 my research, you know, they do have a governing board. So, mm-hmm. you know, when you buy when you buy through the chiefs, they have a um, what they call a trust, a land trust. And, you know, there's paperwork and things um, around it. So um, I believe that you do have protection because it, there is a, a entity or organization, you know, around that. Mm-hmm. But um but I guess whatever stipulations that y'all line out before y'all sign paperwork, you know, that's that's what I would assume that you got that you would have to stick with. And like some chiefs do have a requirement of three months to build if it's residential. Right. You know, and if you don't build with three months, then they can, you know, take back the land, you know. So I wanna buy land, but I but I wanna buy, you know, uh urban land i want to buy land that 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 is already um you know that that's part of the uh, deeds and registry office that's registered that's reg- basically registered land right you know mm-hmm. with the government so um i'm gonna go through some of these questions in the chat uh because someone asked this question initially how much how much for rural land or if you want to share how much that you that you purchase for your for your acre right so I, I paid 500 for my acre for one for one acre 500 and so we were able to get it down to that price because as a 500 group, what uh 500 U, uh, us dollars okay yeah so i was able so we were so we were able to get um get the price uh down to 500 because we were purchasing 40 acres you know as a group so mm-hmm. then once we do that you know we we make the post we see you know um you know, we did two rounds to give people a chance to buy land. Group economics. Go ahead. I'm listening. Yeah. When the second round came around, um, then everybody who was in the first round, if you wanted to buy more land, then you're, you know, you're more than happy, more than, you know, more than happy to uh, go ahead and, you know, partake. So, yeah. So normally I would say the the rural land, if you per acre would go for about, if you were like just doing it like solo, maybe like a thousand five to three thousand, I would say um through a chief um private owned land i'm not sure i i wouldn't i wouldn't know about the private owned land part like private owned rural land so 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 this is group economics you know what i mean i like to hear so y'all got a deal so you so you you got a deal for 500 per acre but you have to buy a minimum of let's say 40 acres um, I wouldn't say a minimum. I would just say that's like that's what the um what our executive director was able to work out. Okay, so the deal was forty acres at five hundred an acre, right? You know, and so since since you could since you wouldn't be able to just purchase one acre on your own, you you put it out there for people to to uh you know I mean to get in on it and say we got forty acres. And you just decided that you wanted to buy one acre. Right. Yeah. Did the other 39 anchor acres get accounted for or get right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah, we we we've already sold everything. But right. um, but I mean there's you know, they land is is <laughs> they got land on land. So um after we get our so yeah, my bad. That's why I got I got sidetracked. But um, mm-hmm. so our next step is now getting a land survey. So when we ask people if you want to use it for residential or agricultural. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Um, now we're going to, um, that's how we're going to group it and separate it. So mm-hmm. if you want it for residential, then, you know, we might, you know, put it over here and then for agricultural, we put it all together that way, you know, it's all, you know, uh, consecutive together. So residential might be, you know, one side agricultural for the other, or some people are even doing like, you know, half acre for, um, for agriculture, half acre, the other half for, uh, you know, for a little home. So, um, so yeah, so we're we're um working on getting the um land survey done. Um okay. now, that way we um you know get started with like irrigation, fencing, um that kind of thing. I mean it makes sense. I mean, if you got a home, I mean if you got a farm, you need you want to live on your farm, so you gotta build right something to live on, you know. What I mean, which makes sense. So man, I mean, I wish you would have called me, man, be like, yo, five hundred dollars, man, get you an acre, man. I probably I would have been like, where do I 
Where do oh, I wait. Oh, yeah. I, th I thought I said that in the last one we did back in January. <laughs> no, you did. No, you, you did. But I oh, think I, I think that, um, you you know, I, I guess I didn't really know how real how real it was. You know what I mean? And then and then also I just recently when I went to South Africa mm -hmm. and did my own research, I kind of got a better understanding on. You know, what I mean, how to protect myself. Right. So. Um, so. But my interest is my interest is, is in quasi Natal. That, that's where I that's that's where I'm looking to, or Eastern Cape. So Eastern Cape, okay. I haven't, so, I, 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 gotta, I haven't been out there yet. Wait, what's up? What's up with Eastern Cape? It's it's on the um it's on the uh, Indian Ocean. So I like that side of South Africa on the Indian Ocean because it's warmer. Oh, okay. It's warmer on that side versus the Western Cape, which is on the Atlantic Ocean. Mm -hmm. So. Brother, do you got anything on the horizon in Quasi Natal or uh <laughs> um well actually so where um so in Kwakwa, um Kwazu Natal is right actually right on the other side of the mountains. So that's what's good about uh about Kwakwa. <laughs> um the other side is uh you have um what is it uh Lesotho and then the other side is um um uh, uh Kwazu Natal just like just right over the mountains and um I got this video too, where um, where, I, where my um, where our executive director was explaining to me like kind of a little bit of the history and like how um, like these mountains and stuff were like like um, like Shaka Zulu, you know, was coming through these mountains and King mm. Shwe, the founder of like my, I was I guess I would say modern day uh, Basutu land, um, mm. where you know we're having battles over the land and you know and wars and that and that kind of stuff and. Um, and a bit of history of like you know the boars that were moving that were moving inland and you know that were uh, moving into the free state land and mm -hmm. was just you know just kind of breaking down a little bit of the history and so it's very interesting um to get an insight on that but um yeah okay but 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 do you have any 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 projects or or what do you or what's on the horizon or what is something that's an opportunity right now if 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 there's any um opportunity right now uh we don't have any right now um as far as moreland but you know coming soon i mean they're like when i was you know met with the chief he's like um you know we have more. he was asking me you know do i like the land because i was actually the first um the first member from the u.s to come and visit the land um so i was the first one that he met with so he's asking you know do you do you guys really like the land and because at that point we had we were already you know uh buying some of the acres so he's like you know if you guys don't like you know, over here, you know, we got land on that side. We got land over here. You know, he's just pointing, pointing, you know, stuff like that. And um, yeah, so I think once we get our survey done, then we'll open up another round of, um, of, uh, of, of uh, you know, of opportunity to buy land. And, um, and yeah, we'll, you know, we'll have that in Kwakwa. But uh, as far as uh, KwaZulu, Natal, we don't at this moment. But um you know, I mean, the possibilities are, you know, are endless. Like anything that we're able to, um, to get a, um, to get a hold on. Like if you're, like if you have an idea, you can post it in the group, and we're able to, you know, build on that. Because if we don't, if we don't know anybody directly, then our executive director would, you know, I mean, if he doesn't know anybody directly that could get us access to certain lands, then I'm sure if you know we could go to a chief or something like that in a certain area. And as long as I think we come with a project maybe a water project, you know what I'm saying? Or maybe some type of, um, you know, in KwaZulu, they tell they actually just went through like a really bad, um, a really bad flooding yeah, incident. Yeah, I heard, I heard. Or, um, you know, maybe there's some type of um, relief project we could come up with or, um, you know, for water, food or shelter or something like that, you know, because we also do have a brick making, um, a brick making company there as well. So, um, you know, um, Hold that thought. Hold that thought. Let me go through the chat real quick because I got I got some I got I got some a few other questions for you. So real okay. quick, Harvey asked about a certain time to develop land within a certain period. So I could just I could answer this question. I know uh, Kimani said that um, he didn't have that conversation about developing, um, and I guess because it's not residential. But for what I for what I researched is that a lot of um, um rural land that's owned by uh that's owned by tribes and governed by chiefs you know what i mean if you buy residential if you buy land for residential purposes they typically want you to to um start con construction within three months 
Right. And, and also, I'll just add, um, too, it, it all depends on, you know, um, so, so since we have the projects that we are doing, um, I don't think there's really like a time limit, you know, on what we're doing. As long as we um, give him an I give the chief an idea of, you know, a timeline, at least they know, you know what I'm saying? Um, I think you're, you're, you're good. But generally, if you're just strictly residential, then, yeah, they do have that 90 day, um, that 90 day uh, limit or time limit. Okay, trade the man so we can start our own neighborhood. <laughs> oh yeah, thanks. Yeah, yeah. That's what we're doing. Um, so we're also doing uh have bought uh land as a group in Tanzania as well, some uh okay. traditional land that we're looking to do a um, you know, a small community like Black Wall Street, something like that. Okay, I think we answered this question, brother Harvey. Let me know if 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 we have it. Oh, how's the land being distributed? Oh, okay, yeah. So we so we bought it as a group. So we get the we get the wholesale price as a group first. Like mm -hmm. we get the proposal first, and then we go to and then we present it to the group, and then we we get you know, um, you know once we get the price, then we say okay, you can buy uh, an acre of land at this price. Whoever wants to buy, you know, first come first serve. Okay, so how do you guys um section the land since? Because I'm pretty I'm I'm assuming they're selling it as a big plot. And you guys, right? How are you? How are you guys sectioning off each acre? Oh, okay, right. So yeah, so that so now that we have like a, like a deed, you know, like what we're looking at right here, the uh, the deed from the traditional council. Um, after we get the land survey done, which um, which I learned that uh, chiefs don't typically uh, help with land surveys, um, mm -hmm. so that's something you got to outsource. So we're currently outsourcing that through you know um, someone from the uh, a company from the municipality. That'll come out and do it. And then once we get the survey for the whole plot, then we'll divide, you know, the acres um, amongst each other. Oh, okay. how, you know, how many or whoever bought how many acres, we divide it that way. Gotcha. But do you, did you select the the acre, the, the, I guess the area of the plot that you wanted or? The oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I got mine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, the picture that you have with the small house on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, that's the one that I chose. Okay. Yeah. I'm like, I want that one because, you know, it's like nice and flat. Yeah, this one right here. Oh, let me go back. Right here? Yeah, yeah this one right here. Okay, okay. I got this one. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. So, yeah, after the survey, then I understand you could get the, uh, you know, the documentation on who who owns what or things of that nature. Um, does it matter if the group entity is incorporated abroad? So, um, you're buying it as a group or individual? Uh, we bought it as a group. So we also, so we have, um, so the, um, the ledge group is, uh, we do have an LLC here in, um, in the US. And mm -hmm. then once we start uh, a project in the country, we partner up with a local, you know, AKA the executive director. And um, we also incorporate in that country as well. So that mm -hmm. way we, we do set up a way of legal recourse of, of uh, for anything that we do for buying land, um, certain projects or businesses. Um, yeah. That we may that we may do any venture that we may do we have a legal entity set up for it okay um this is a little off topic but i know that I, i've seen brothers come together to do projects and then unfortunately somebody died so do y'all have a uh process if something happens something happened where their family is notified or proper ownership is transferred have y'all ever had those conversations oh right yeah so um so we do have those conversations actually pretty often um we are able to so members of the organization are able to put um maybe put in a note that you know if anything were to happen to me then i would want to pass it down to this person if you don't have any offspring mm -hmm. right okay yeah, we, we do we do have those conversations okay um trader man asked a question is free stay by it's Swatini or so Sotho? Oh, oh, Lesotho. Oh, so it's it's right it's right on the um the border of Lesotho, actually surrounding like the whole the whole northern border, like northern and like western border part of it. But it's about five uh five hours drive from Swatini, as is, and it's like right in between Joburg and Durban too. So I kind of like that as well, like the the location of it. It's a four hour drive from you know this way and that way. Okay. Um, do you got, did you guys calculate any cost of construction yet? Uh, we did not, we did not. 
Um, but that's one of the things that's going to be um, included when we do the survey, because we're also going to have to. Um, so it's right. So the land is like uh, maybe 500 meters from uh, from the um, what's the name of that border uh, from a border post into Lesotho. It's not mm -hmm. currently open due to COVID and they're also doing road work on the other side. But the mm -hmm. road leading up to it is like perfectly fine. Um, okay. But it uh, but we're going to have to build like another road leading off to um, going towards the land. There's like already like a walk pathway. That somebody built because i mean as you can see somebody used to live out there so mm. but i mean it's uh, no longer anybody living out there so there's a walkway path but eventually yeah we're gonna have to you know build a road but that's something that we're going to get uh, inside the budget once we get the um survey done wow wow somebody said crazy internet said what kind of animals is out there where you bought 40 acres <laughs> 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 oh man yeah i'm, I'm trying to the first thing i'm gonna get when i get my fencing up, i'm getting some goats and probably a horse <laughs> is there any wildlife um <laughs> is any wildlife that's kind of out there that you know about um that i've seen just uh this thing called a springbok which uh you I, did you heard of springbok when you're out there i no, guess it's no. kind of like a um would be like a deer like a moose kind of thing mm -hmm. yeah yeah I, I ate one too it was kind of it was kind of nice i ain't gonna lie but uh but yeah it's a springbok is out there um other than that, I've heard like, you know, like mountain cats, like, you know, like, you know, small, like, um, like, I don't want to say like lions or, you know, tigers and like that, but like bobcats, I guess, something like that. Okay. Um, but other than that, uh, I don't think there's really anything out there, you know, small mammals, rodents, that kind of thing. Um, okay. Yeah. Not, but from what I've seen, just spring bok, though. I mean, I've seen even in urban Durban, I, I've seen some uh, some monkeys, right. trees. You know, I've seen yeah. small monkeys, which was different. Um, what's your role in in the nonprofit? Uh, so my role, I, I um, I'm doing videography and photography and uh, like social media managing as well. So um, basically, that's pretty much what I was going there to do. Was like on assignment was to take videos and you know do like a, a introduction video of um, of how long we've been working. Um, of how we got it started in South Africa and the water project and how it's servicing the community, different things like that. Because we also do look um, outside of how we raise funds in between the group. We mm -hmm. also look for, you know, we may look for outside investors that may want to be a part of certain projects or you know, what have you, depending on what it is. Okay. Um, more future said, I'll, I'll post a Facebook group link in the, um, in the chat again, but he says, do, do they accept anyone? Um, who's to be a part of the group. Right, yeah, pretty much, yeah. I mean, if you're Black, you with us, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty much it, I think. Um, the founder, cool. Peter Brown, he's originally from Boston. He has a background in like cybersecurity and engineering and stuff like that. So he does a um, he does a little bit of a of some type of background check when you, um, not when you, so the link that we posted, you can, anybody can go in there. That group is public. Anybody can go to the Facebook group, okay. So, yeah. No, I was just saying what I'm just posting. This is the Facebook group, so anybody can click. Oh, right. on Facebook okay, yeah. Group. So, so that's the public group. So, yeah, anybody can go in there and see what we got going on and see, you know, what the areas we're active in. And then, um, yeah, the founder has a has a background in cybersecurity and stuff like that. So he he has his own process that he does uh, once you um, once you decide to become a member. Um, and join then you once you uh make a request for the for the private group then then that's when he'll do like some type of background check or whatever i, I really don't know the process but um he has his own you know little method <laughs> okay okay so is it is it limited to i guess is it intended for for black uh enrichment or because you mentioned you mentioned if you're a brother so is it is it like is it for black people Right, yeah, strictly for black people. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. But we're not against the working with people, but as far as the group and what and the things that we have access to, yeah, mm -hmm. you got to be black. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, under, I, I, mean, I understand. Mm -hmm. It's a nonprofit that has goals and initiatives to, you know, reach people that may, that, how do I say that? have been deprived of certain information other groups have been privy to for so long. So I definitely understand that. Yeah. Um, what's up, Jew Travels? Oh, yeah. Shout out, Jew. I was Tanzania, yeah. man. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm going to be um, talking with him 
on the Passport Bros podcast, and our show is scheduled at in fifteen minutes. Okay. So, um, so yeah, so I'm definitely gonna um, let me make sure I post that link as well. But um, but yeah, we still got we st- we still got some some time to um to rock out. So I wanted to ask you this because this is this is something I know South Africa is very very um strict on and it's 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 res is residency and visas oh visas word yeah <laughs> so so what so what is it so what yeah tell us about the visa conversations you guys had um because it's one thing to own you could you could own land in South Africa under a tourist visa but as you know a tourist visa is typically 90 days Right. So it's basically you're basically owning property that you only could spend 90 days out the year. Mm. So right. tell us about long term uh, visa options. Right. OK, so for me, I've just been on to on a tourist visa um, for the time that I have spent there. Um, collectively, probably about like four months. Um, I was there from December to February, then went back in uh, like over for 420 and stuff and then just, just got back to the U.S. But um yeah, that's something I've been thinking about too. And for me, I'm not married, I have no kids, so um, I, I'm thinking my wife gonna be from South Africa. To be honest with you, um, okay. especially for for what I want for the projects that I want to do in South Africa, it's somewhere that I see myself being long term. So mm-hmm. I'm probably it's gonna make sense for me to like have a wife there. And even with, um, I mean, even with that kind of visa, it takes a while to get like approved and you know stuff like that. Even, right. <laughs> and then um, the way I understand it is that. Once you once you get these um uh okay so the different types of visas that they have they have the business visa which has you know different um levels there's the uh, retirement visa which you can access at any age as long as you have show mm-hmm. that you have a residual income um that's at least I want to say I think it was two thousand five hundred um like thirty seven thousand rand uh, I'll probably look that up real quick but. Uh, Okay, two thousand about two thousand two hundred eighty nine. So, um, so yeah, as long as you show that you have a residual income of that, then you're able to get a retirement visa, and that's for any age. Um, other than that, you know, there's the the, um, the marriage visa, um, and then they have what's called a life partner visa, which is like if you're traditionally married but not married on paper, you just got to prove oh, that right. you live together with somebody for a certain period of time. Um, but uh, you know, these are all visas. Permanent residence is like a whole different thing there. And so some of these visas you have to hold for like, like the marriage visa, for example, I think you have to hold that for five years and then mm-hmm. you get permanent residence. And then once you get permanent residence, then that's when your clock starts towards citizenship. And I well, think- Well, well, not- well, well I researched this. I yeah. researched the citizenship. Americans can't, well, let's say this. Americans, foreigners can't get dual citizenship. Only, only your, only if you have a, ch- only your child can get dual citizenship if you have a child with a South African. Oh, so, word. Some countries like Colombia, Brazil, DR, you can be a dual citizen. But I, I know in South Africa, most of, and in Southern Africa, you would have to pick one: South Africa or United States. But if you have a child, your child could benefit from both. But, but, but you wow. can't. Oh, okay, dang! I didn't know that. I thought you yeah. had to. Um, I thought it was just a long process to do it. No citizenship. I mean, but I mean, the difference between citizenship and permanent residency is basically the ability to vote. Right. Yeah. yeah I mean, that that's the that's the main thing: ability to vote. So, and then other, uh, you know, maybe tax, tax, uh, tax benefits or things of that nature. But mm-hmm. if you're not trying to vote for the most part, you Term know. Residency. Person reverency, you know what I mean? You know and I thought I mean. about that too. Like I would think that as long as my kids were straight, I, I think I would be fine. Um, like if I had permanent residence, but they were able to benefit from having, you know, US and South African citizenship, then I think that would be fine. That's something I've thought about. Because I've even like looked at, you know, um getting us another passport in South America somewhere. Working on oh. options. Like, like I know in Brazil, like you could um like if a child is born in Brazil, regardless of the parents' nationalities, um, the child right. is a citizen automatically and then the parents can apply for dual a permanent residency just right. from having a child there and then a year 
I would say 12 to 18 months after that, you could apply for citizenship. So yeah, Brazil was, like one of, was one that I was looking at. Yeah, Brazil is pretty easier because I know, I mean, I know a couple of people that had children um, mm-hmm. and, you know, they got residents, you know what I mean? But places like DR, you just can't have a baby for residency. You got to be married. You know, right. Colombia is 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 changing its laws too. So you got to be married. You just can't have a baby. You know what right. I mean? But, but, but Brazil, you can have a baby without marriage and get and get residency. Right. For those that didn't know, and, and that's one thing too. I would say that um, I would like to see brothers talk about more. You know, um, mm-hmm. as far as like um, you know, the, we I know a lot of brothers, maybe you know, veterans, retired or whatever, they do perpetual traveling and. Or, you know, or may have a home base somewhere else, but uh, I don't think visas get talked about enough. Like visas, the different types of visas, residency, um, and, and, you know, and even citizenship. I think that's something that um, that we could all learn from as well. Um, true, true. I, I brought visa conversations up, you know, but sometimes it don't get traction. But I mean, I think it's something that, you know, I should, you know, bring up bring up again because right. yeah like I, i've tried to post about you know like the uh, african ancestry dna tests you know about certain countries like uh ghana guinea bissau and sierra leone are you know are, are granting citizenship you know based on you know lineage based results and you know descendants in in the diaspora and stuff like that so i, I think it's something worth looking into especially you know to have a, a second option to you know go and buy land in those countries or you know um you know, build homes and different things like that. Uh, question, uh, Harvey asked, uh, what made uh, Kimani decide to settle in South Africa, having visited all of these other countries, especially in East and West Africa? Oh, all right. Good question. Um, so, so far I've been to six countries in Africa, uh, Ghana, Sierra Leone, Cape Verde, uh, Tanzania. Yeah. And in South Africa and Lesotho. Um, what's, what has me in South Africa now is um, the opportunities that I see and the projects that we're doing there. And then also I would like to get into, so my brand virtual heart, right. Um, I would like to uh, make um, or get into making souvenirs and t-shirts and stuff like that. I have been over the years, like I would make, you know, certain things inspired by the location that I'm traveling to and then, mm-hmm. you know, give it out to free for people do a, you know, a little photo shoot, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would really like to do cannabis tourism. Like that's where my real passion is. And I, I started that when I was in LA, like um, I was doing things, you know, um, marketing towards, you know, that type of um, that type of crowd. But I don't know, something happened where like I had my Shopify website and they um, there was a feature where you were able to link it through Instagram. And then I don't know, they started like banning, like banning me from Instagram and stuff. So I kind of like stopped do- doing it. But in South Africa, they're going towards, um, you know, they're still going towards uh, recreational legalization. And um, and I actually uh, have was reading like a um, I guess like a memorandum or a, um, articles of uh, of the bill or the um, what do you call it? I don't know wh- whatever they they come up with to detail everything that's going to happen in this bill when they pass it and it covers you know recreation and um, cannabis use for tourism and different things like that so they're trying to open up those markets and the crazy thing about it too is that there's already companies that are doing things like that. Especially over 420, there was like things in Cape Town they were doing called like a Kush cruise, you know, where they were having bud tastings and different things like that on a cruise, through, you know, around the Western Cape. Um, so I would love to get in and do something like that and then eventually relay that into doing a resort, um, a cannabis friendly resort where we can do wellness retreats. Um, uh, yeah, different things like that. So that's where my real like long term goal passion is. <laughs> is in cannabis tourism. And right now, South Africa is like, you know, number one in the world, I would say, um, mm. in that as a country, as a whole. Wow, 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 man. Man, you 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 uh you gave a lot of information, man. Um I definitely um encourage people to join the Facebook group. I just did. Um there mm-hmm. are fi- there are five questions that you gotta answer before uh I guess you could get approved in a group, but they're pretty pretty straightforward um i'm interested in quasi natal or um you know eastern cape so that's something you said i could kind of maybe pose a question or right or or, even you know be the be the um be the trailblazer in in that side you know 
Because I mean, it's all it's all up to what the members want to do. Like we have things we do as a group, and then there's things you can do. You know, essentially yourself, like things you can you know bring to the forefront and kind of lead. Like I, I mean, man, we there's all types of opportunities. Um, you know, we yeah, like we you know we have a we have a coffee uh, plantation in Uganda, so we have a member who's mm-hmm. in charge of like um, wholesaling the coffee. So different members who want to sell the coffee in the U.S., you know, we have access to wholesale prices you know, that we can get and, you know, the whole shipping thing, you know, ship it directly to you. And then, you know, the coffee that you sell, that's, that's, you know, that's, that profit is yours, you know? Wow. 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 So I, an idea I have is that I have put it in a Facebook group, but I didn't get a lot of traction, but I wanted to do, um, I want, you know, a warehouse is always good because um, a lot of imports come in and then, you know, people may not have a place to storm. And so I want to build, I want to be able to build just empty warehouses where people could lease the space, um, you know, for incoming freights that come in or, um, or trucks that come in, but it, ha- it would have to be in a strategic location because, you know, f- for trash, for transportation routes, but I would definitely, I definitely want to, um, do a project like that so i definitely um you know put it out there and you know maybe and you can talk to people about it as well um you're in the u.s right now right yep i'm in the u.s right now okay where where are you from the u.s i'm originally from the midwest but right now but i'm in philadelphia oh nice okay that's one of my favorite cities in the u.s i ain't gonna lie (laughs) so i got about two more minutes so um two questions uh harvey said Oh, he asked me, you thinking of setting up cannabis business in Colombia? I'm not doing any business in Colombia. My the only thing in Colombia is my is my wife, and I'm trying and I'm tr- and I want us to live in South Africa. <laughs> how does you know um, I mean? uh, if you don't mind me asking, how does she think about Af- South Africa? Like from what you tell her and stuff. I mean, she's excited. I mean, partly because she's Afro Colombian and she embraces being an Afro Latina. Nice. And you know what I mean, and she sees that people that look like her. Word, okay. You know what I mean. So yeah, she's she definitely um is excited about it. You know what right. I mean. And South Africa is, I would say, a first world country. Um, but yeah, I we I definitely would want to partner up with him. And then um, let me see, how can we buy coffee from Uganda? Lesotho, pretty big on cannabis. Okay, I didn't know about um, I didn't know about the cannabis industry but um but yeah uh if you if you want to answer this question and give your closing thoughts because i got a stream that i gotta start in two minutes. okay where? okay so um so yeah so we have a member who's um our member uh otis he's in charge of the uh the coffee in uh uganda so i could put you in contact with him and um uh see if we could set that up Okay. But I, I think if you, I think you could. So if you wanted to like buy the coffee like at retail price, then we could, I could do that for you. But if you were looking to do like wholesale, then you would have to be a member in order to access, you know, that as a benefit. Okay. So, so I would say Harvey, join the Facebook group. The link is in the chat, and then you can probably proceed from there. Yeah. And then, um, so I'm doing two more streams. So on the Passport Bros podcast, I just posted a link. I'm about to do a stream with Brother Jew Travels on Tanzania. And then back on this channel at 1.45 Eastern time, which is two hours from now, I'm going to uh, hopefully have some ladies from Botswana and we're going to talk about um, Botswana. So uh, can I have one more thing? My fault. Go ahead. Um, okay, so in order to become an official member of the group, there is a fee um, for single adults, for single males, right? Or single adults, uh, period. It's, um, it is a thousand US dollars, but that fee that you pay goes towards an active project that we have ongoing. It can either go towards an active project or maybe something that you would like to start. Um, so, uh, yeah, so a, a thousand for single adults, um, 500 for dependents, like kids under 18. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think over 18 is like 750. Um, so yeah, so there is a fee to actually join the group, but the link that we posted is for, um, is a public group. So that's for you to, you know, go through everything, um, ask questions about any country you may have any project, um, that we have ongoing. Um, get a feel for it because I got a feel for it for at least eight months before I joined, you know? Um, so yeah. So I just wanted to make sure that was clear. My bad. 
I just want to make sure I mention that so that way when people say, oh, we got to pay? Like, uh, yeah, I don't want to surprise nobody. But those fees aren't going towards paying anybody's bills. <laughs> you know, it's going towards, yeah, um, an active project, buying land, equipment. Um, yeah, stuff like that. All right, cool, brother. Appreciate your time, man. Thank you. Thank you for having me. About to start the other stream on another uh, on another podcast. All right. Cool. See you later. Thank you all for tuning in. All right.